So you're thinking about moving to Detroit, Michigan. Well, ugh, let's pump the brakes here, guys. I mean, Detroit's got a long ways to go. It's come a long ways, but it's still got a long ways to go. So before you start getting into the real estate market, start looking at homes and deciding, yep, I'm going to move to Detroit, Michigan, then you need to watch this entire video because I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Detroit and some reasons you might want to avoid Detroit at all costs. So if that interests you guys, stick around because we're getting after it right now. What's going on, you guys? Eric Meldrum here, your Michigan real estate agent. Now, I've lived in Michigan my whole entire life. I grew up in Metro Detroit, and I know a thing or two about it. So in this video, we're talking all about Detroit and some reasons to avoid living in Detroit, which there's a lot of them, trust me. But there's also a lot of reasons why you should live in Detroit if the lifestyle suits you. So make sure you stick around to the end where I'm talking about the upside on why Detroit is so up and coming and why you might wanna consider living there. But before we get into this, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning to my channel, welcome back. I love hanging out with you. I make videos just like this on all things Metro Detroit on what it's like to live here. We got vlog tours, property tours, and videos where we just talk about the cities and some stats and if you got questions, make sure you drop it in the comments below or reach out. I'd be happy to answer those personally. And hey, if you're moving in one month or one year from now, it doesn't matter. You got to get a hold of us. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We'd be happy to help you make a smooth move here to Michigan. And we want to be the best resource for you when you do that. All right, so you might be asking yourself, what the heck happened to Detroit? I mean, there was a bunch of people who lived there and now the city's like desolate. There's like nobody, you hear a bunch of crime and you hear a bunch of things that the city went bankrupt. Well, here's how all this went down. So back in the 50s and 60s, Detroit was in its heyday. The population neared about 1.8 million people. Now in the late 60s, a lot of Metro Detroit was starting to be built out. So there was a big exodus of Detroit pushed out into the outer suburbs, which is known as Metro Detroit today. Cities like Gross Point, St. Clair Shores, Warren, you know, all those types of cities that are surrounding Detroit, those are the suburbs, or as we know, Metro Detroit. Now, in the late 70s, some other interesting things started happening in the auto world. Now, you gotta remember, Detroit was basically built around the auto boom. There was tons of manufacturing, the big three, Ford, GM, Chrysler, um, they employed nearly half of the city. Well, come late 70s, we started seeing a lot of those manufacturing jobs leaving Detroit because, well, frankly, they didn't want to put up with the unions and they went to states that were at will. So we saw a lot of manufacturing jobs leave. The union went from about 1.5 members um, in its heyday to around 300,000 um, when all this was said and done. And now today it stands around 100,000 people in the union. So you can see 1.5 down to 100,000, a lot of people are, are gone from that workforce and manufacturing has really um, exited Detroit in a big way. This happened up in Flint as well and Detroit was the first that was majorly affected by it. So we saw that go down and then on top of that, all of these things were happening. The city was hiring people and you know, it was crazy. Well, nobody works there anymore because the city went bankrupt. I don't think you've ever heard of a city going bankrupt. Well, Detroit was the first city to ever go bankrupt. And that is because they employed about 18 employees to every, every thousand residents in the city. It's absolutely insane. I think the average around the nation is like 10 city employees to every thousand people who live there. So they were overstaffed, spending a lot of money, tons of corruption in the city as well. But that's not what this video is about. If you wanna research that, go look up all the corruption that was happening in Detroit. But that's really how the city um, really took shape and lost a lot of its people because a lot of jobs left. Now, today, the population sits around 632,000. Well, 632,000 is pretty much less than half of where it was in its heyday. So a lot of people are gone. On top of that, let's get into the size of the city, right? Which brings us to our next point. The size of the city is absolutely massive. I mean, you can fit New York, San Francisco, and Dallas, Texas, all into Detroit. It's 142 square miles. Now, 142 square miles might not seem like a lot on the grand scheme of things, but when you look at it on a map compared to 
other major cities and the fact that you can fit San Francisco, New York, and Dallas all into Detroit, man, it seems pretty big now, doesn't it? So just the sheer size of Detroit, I mean, there's so much rebuilding to be done. And this is partly why Detroit has been slow to come back, right? They, they got to start somewhere. And there at one point was a whole proposal to really level most of the square miles in Detroit and basically just put like farmland, like just level it plant grass and let it grow. So nobody has to look at abandoned houses. Nobody's squatting in houses. Well, this never got passed. I thought it was a fantastic idea. Can you imagine if the whole entire city was just like green, all the houses are gone. There's no squatters. There's no, there's nowhere to go hide and like, you know, do illegal activity. Everything is just flat. Well, that might cause some other problems. And I, there's a reason they didn't do it. Um, but anyways, that would have been cool. I would have loved to see Detroit just leveled, just, gone. All right. So another reason you might want to avoid living in Detroit. Well, the public transportation, ugh, quite frankly, it sucks. I mean, you got buses and cars, Uber, Lyft, but there's this little thing called the people mover. It's not that great to be honest with you. If you're living in a city like New York or San Francisco, where um, you got a trolley or underground um, railway, then the people mover is going to seem like a little carnival ride to be honest with you it's probably uh it's probably what you picture when you see the people mover um it doesn't go very far it goes from point a to point b um and that's about it right you're getting basically downtown detroit from one end to the next and it's not, that's not even one end to the next it's like just certain points around there so it's really weird how they set it up but anyways i remember going down there and thinking it was cool to ride it as a little kid I'm sure tons of little kids will enjoy it and i've been enjoying it but not much in public transportation. The bus system, notoriously late. Um, you're not going to be able to rely on that. Personally, I would drive a car if I was living in Detroit, um, own a car, or just rely on Uber and Lyft to get around. Either way, you're going to have to pay for something. So living in the city just depends on if you're living in downtown Detroit or you're going to be living in the suburbs of Detroit. You know, there's plenty of ways to get around, but my advice to you, buy a car. All right, so let's talk about the houses here in Detroit. This is one of the areas where I spend most of the time asking a lot of questions so I can make sure that realistic expectations are set when you are moving to Detroit. Now, when you look up the national average and that as it stands today for a house in Detroit is $42,000, okay? That, again, Detroit's big and you might be thinking to yourself like, bam, yeah, nailed it, man. I'm gonna get into a place where I can get a house $42,000, I'm gonna save a bunch of money, I can probably buy it cash. Well, eh, not gonna happen here in Detroit unless you are wanting to move into an area where some of the houses are abandoned and you're gonna start fixing those up and living in those homes to fix them up because the city has some pretty strict guidelines on investors coming in now. Now, here's what you do need to know. The average home in the US is right around 227,000, so well below it. So let's just start there. Now, if you're getting into downtown cities or little, little areas like Corktown, Midtown, or downtown specifically, you're probably gonna be paying anywhere from 300 on up into the millions. As of today, there are 17 properties listed in Detroit for over a million dollars. The highest one is 3.49 million. These places, right downtown, loft style, multiple levels, really cool decor. I mean, it's got pretty much everything you need. Door service, gym in the building. I mean, it's it's pretty luxurious. We'll show a picture of it here. But you're gonna find these type of places, but on average, you're gonna be paying anywhere from 300 to about 600,000 for a place in Detroit. Now the lowest listed property in Detroit, I just found a bunch of them. You can buy like a bundles of these things. I mean, investors and, and people, the city's selling them. The Detroit land development is literally selling these properties for like $2,500 and you have to buy three of them. I mean, so you gotta spend 7,500 bucks, but you can buy three properties. And again, the city is gonna have some guidelines around the development. You gotta come in, show some intent to buy them. The days of finding a house for 20 bucks or a dollar, Guys, those don't exist anymore. That was like way back when on the, the gold rush, that has been leveled. Kaputs does not exist here in Detroit anymore. The city cracked down and said, you gotta show some intent and develop. Otherwise, we just got a bunch of people who own land and it still looks like crap. So 
you know, they don't want that. All right, so the other thing you need to know about real estate in Detroit is the property taxes. Now, property taxes are higher than most cities here in Metro Detroit. The average, I would say, in Metro Detroit is around 1.5% for your property value. And in Detroit, it's 2.65%. So almost a percent higher, well, over a percent higher than the average in Metro Detroit. Now, you can find some areas um, in Metro Detroit that are a little bit lower. If you go into some of the townships, um, you're going to find a lower tax bracket. But Detroit, you can buy a cheap house, but you're going to be paying through the roof for property taxes. And I can assure you the city services that come along with those high taxes are nothing compared to what some of these surrounding areas are. But again, if you wanna be downtown and you want the Detroit lifestyle, then hey, it's all good. Property taxes shouldn't deter you from it. All right, so next up is the crime in Detroit. Now, yes, the rumors are true. What you hear on the news, what you've read about Detroit thus far, there is a ton of crime. You gotta remember, there's 142 square miles of blithe vacant land. You know, there's areas that there's like one house standing and there's like two houses across the street and squatters are living in them. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, I remember when we just went downtown, we went to the original Buddy's Pizza. If you guys are downtown, um, definitely go visit the original Buddy's Pizza. The pizza's oh, so good. But those areas down there are really rough. I mean, I remember taking my girls in there, uh, my wife, and I was like, okay, I I know this place is cool. Like we're at the original Buddy's Pizza, but I'm looking around like, are we safe? You know, I just driving down the street, there's half of a dirt road and half cement. I mean, it was pretty sketchy. So just go at your own risk. So if you're not into exploring, I would stay in the downtown area, but if you are, you can see some really cool parts of Detroit. There's a lot of remnants of the heyday, the factories, um, a lot of the old buildings, but just be careful when doing so. All right, so Eric, we talked about so many things that we should be aware of to avoid making mistakes on moving to Detroit. We talked about the size, the population, you know, the crime, the housing, the property taxes. Is there anything good about living in Detroit? Well, yes, there is. There is some pretty good upside to living downtown Detroit. Now, the Detroit area has come a long way since about 2008. Now, Dan Gilbert, I will attest a lot of the development to this man and the city is so lucky to have him because he's come in and if you don't know Dan Gilbert, he is the founder of Rocket Mortgage. He used to be known as Quicken Loans. They changed the name for some funky reason, but he's also the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, billionaire, you know, he owns a ton of stuff in the city. So not only is he involved in those two ventures, but anything construction wise, he's got his hand in anything development wise, real estate, he is probably looking at it along with his partners and making those changes to the city. So a lot of the new developments are because of him and other people coming in. And once you have one really main person that's doing a lot of development, it tends to be easier to get more people to come in and do it, right? If somebody's pumping their money in, well, we'll match it dollar for dollar. So the developments become a little bit easier to do because so many people are doing them now. And that's the cool thing. But we have a long ways to go because the downtown area is just a small part of that 142 square miles. And again, like I said in the beginning of the video, I don't know that we'll ever get to a full redevelopment of Detroit itself. I think the downtown is going to be booming. I think there's a lot of cool things that are going to happen on the surrounding areas. But those other areas, who knows? Maybe the city is going to go back to that plan where they talked about just leveling everything, starting green, doing, you know, farms in the in the metro Detroit area. Um, who knows? It could be crazy where we're farming our own food on the land. We got a recession coming up, so that's not the worst thing in the world. It's a good idea, actually. If anybody's watching and you want to go into some urban farming, put in the comments below. I'm sure there's other people out there that would do it. Actually, you know what? There are places in Detroit that are already doing that. What am I talking about? Some up and coming neighborhoods that you should definitely check out if you are gonna be living in Detroit or you wanna be moving to Detroit. Number one is Midtown. They have some lofts, they have some new construction. They got some cool properties in Midtown and there's a lot of things surrounding it. So you got the Detroit Institute of Arts, you got Wayne State University. So there's some economic growth there. Um, with those two things, Midtown is a great investment up and coming. So definitely keep that one on your list. So the next one you should check out is Corktown. 
Corktown. Corktown is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Detroit. It's close to all the sports venues. They got some great restaurants, great bars. So definitely keep that one on the list as well. And if you're looking for some neighborhoods with a little bit more suburb feel, you got some houses, maybe a sidewalk to walk the dog or the kids, then I would check out West Village and Palmer Woods. There's some awesome homes. They got some Tudor style homes, some old Victorian homes in there. And the architecture is absolutely beautiful. A lot of people have invested a ton of money in bringing these homes back into the original heyday. So these homes are a great option if you're looking to be in the city, in a suburb, in a great area, downtown Detroit. All right, so there's a lot of reasons to avoid living in Detroit, Michigan, which we talked about. We got the crime, we got the transportation sucks. I mean, the list goes on. It's all the things that I just covered, but there is a lot of reasons to live in Detroit. Now, the city is getting a ton of money pumped into it. They have been for the past decade. Guys like Dan Gilbert and all of his investor friends and all the people that are following um, his footsteps, they are bringing the city back and it's the help of the people that are willing to move there to buy the real estate and invest their time and the long haul into the city. That's what's gonna make this city vibrant again. So we're almost there, we got a long ways to go, but there's good things happening. So guys, again, if you were thinking about moving to Detroit, I wanna be the best resource for you. Hopefully you found value in this video. Make sure you subscribe and tap that little bell so you're the first to learn about the current market and all the new videos we drop. And hey, if you're moving here in one month or one year from now, do not hesitate to give us a call. It's just a text send us an email. I want to be the best resource for you and we got your back when doing so. Go check out these other videos that we got here. We got videos on all things Metro Detroit, got some playlists, got this video. And until next time, go out and have an awesome day. We'll see you. Peace.